Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Oh my goodness, what an unexpected surprise. What looked like a simple gimmicky jump scare horror film turns out to be a lean, well-written, kinda heartbreaking drama with depth and resonance. And it's terrifying. Lights Out is fun, intense, and enormously satisfying, even if you're not a horror fan. And at a scant 81 minutes long, it's a lean, mean thrill ride to boot. Therefore, Lights Out ends up being one of the summer's biggest surprises. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in depth. Now, Lights Out is really very simple. Not very many characters, not an overly complex plot, and the monster around which the entire movie is based has one single, unique, visually compelling, and easily identifiable hook. It can only get you, or be seen, in the dark. This film is based upon a very creepy short film from a few years ago, which I have linked in the show notes below, and it makes the rules of this monster pretty easy to figure out. If you're in the light, you're safe. If you're not, even if it's daytime, and you're in a shadowy or unlit room, you better watch your six, because there is something really, really scary right behind you. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's what you're always thinking in movies like this. You try to outsmart the situation. I can't tell you how many times I've developed battle plans while watching movies like this, movies with crazy rules, or even zombie apocalypse movies, where I try and determine where would be the best place to hold up if there was a zombie apocalypse, and don't act like you wouldn't go and fortify the nearest Costco. By the way, don't try to steal my Costco idea. In the case of a zombie apocalypse, no one's getting into my Costco without the password. Anyway, while watching Lights Out, I had the same thoughts. Okay, so I guess I'd just uh, spend the night with a big miner's helmet on my head and like a gas generator powered spotlight just shining on me at all times while I wore a disco ball evening jacket like the one Steve Martin wore in Leap of Faith. And here's the thing. For once, we get a movie entirely populated with pretty smart and resourceful characters that figure things out quickly, sometimes staying even one step ahead of me at times. They keep doing smart things. Yes, there sure are times when they have to go into a dark place, but they're always aware of the risks. They never end up there by accident. They take precautions, and they only do it when absolutely necessary. That's another thing about how brilliant this movie is. There are no simple solutions. Oh, just leave the haunted house, you say? Well, this monster isn't confined to the house. It can get you anywhere. Their house, her house, your house, any dark alley. As long as there's an absence of light, she can be there. Just have the brother live with his sister? Well, as a school guidance counselor points out early on, you can't just take a boy away from his mother, especially if you're just some punk kid without her life together. How about everybody just band together, back to back, and avoid the dark? Well, one or more of the main characters might actually be a little untrustworthy and maybe <gasps> enabling the monster? That character is Sophie, played by Maria Bello. She's clearly psychologically unstable, off her meds, and talks to some strange entity who always remains in the shadow and really seems to have it out for the members of Sophie's family. Mom? What's up? Did we wake you? What? That really becomes a cause of concern for little Martin, her son, whose father is killed under mysterious circumstances, leaving him alone in the house trying to get some sleep while death and insanity lurk just outside his bedroom door. And sometimes, maybe inside it? <gasps> so he enlists the help of his ne'er-do-well older stepsister, played by the very appealing Teresa Palmer. Her character, Rebecca, ends up being the central character in this drama, as she wants to protect her little brother, loves and fears her mother, and along with the help of her dopey puppy dog boyfriend, has to face unspeakable evil in order to try and save her family. Now these four main characters, the mom, the prodigal daughter, the boy, and the boyfriend, are really the core of this story, and they're all well-written and well-played, shockingly enough. Maria Bello in particular takes the part of the crazy person in a horror movie, something we've seen all the time, and infuses her with life and a sort of heartbreaking pathos that I really was not expecting. In addition to the sheer survival story being told, there's also an intriguing backstory and a poignancy in the proceedings that I just was not expecting either. I also was not expecting the gimmick to sustain excitement as long as it did. Here, the characters and the very movie itself kept surprising me with new and inventive ways to deal with the central monster and the capacity to care about who lives and who dies. Because the thing is, this movie isn't about its body count. Even characters that I just assumed were there to be cruel cannon fodder brought real energy to the storytelling and had audiences cheering their narrow escapes. And the resolution of the story is grounded, emotional, and completely satisfying. Please, Warner Brothers, I'm begging you. When this movie is a massive hit, please, please don't make this into a franchise. The story told here is so personal, so small, so self-contained, I really want this to be the end. Let this movie stand alone as a taut, dramatic, perfect gem of a horror movie. We don't get many of those, 
and they should be celebrated. I award Lights Out an enthusiastic extra large bag of popcorn with so much entertainment value crammed into every minute. With smart people making brave and intelligent decisions to fight a terrifying monster, this film subverted my expectations at every turn. If Jaws made you afraid to go in the water, Lights Out will make you terrified of the dark and make you wander randomly throughout your home checking and rechecking for burnt out light bulbs. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, click subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Please tell me what you thought of Lights Out in the comments below. I really can't wait to hear what some of you thought, and if you enjoyed this review, be sure to give us a click on the thumbs up icon below as well. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and it only takes one of me to screw in a light bulb.